I want us to pray about 2021. I know the year 2020 was difficult for many people. And there are some believers who wonder why God has not been answering their prayers. I want you to know something. Because a lot of people want to use God to fix their problems. You cannot use God. God responds to a relationship. That's why he wants you to continuously pray so that you can develop a relationship with him, communion, fellowship with God. I repeat, God responds to a relationship, not to our needs, but to a relationship. So God is a relationship keeping God. So I would like to teach you about prayer so that we pray from a point of knowledge. Ephesians 6.18 Ephesians 6.18 And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. All occasions with all, all kinds of prayers and requests. This scripture suggests there are different kinds of prayers and requests. And I'll take you through 12 of them, 12 types of prayers. Number one, confession. Confession. Confession means repenting our sins, changing our mind from what we were doing wrong to doing right, from walking south to walking north. Confession is stopping what you are doing and consciously do the right thing. First John 1 John 1.9 If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. God forgives us all our sins. Now, this text was written to believers. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus taught us to pray, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. This was a daily prayer. We never graduate from repenting our sins. We must never feel too righteous in the presence of God. Every time you come to God in prayer, always remember to confess your sins. Say like the psalmist, search me, O Lord, and see whether there is something unclean, something impure within me. So you search yourself first, and then you can ask the Holy Spirit to search what you do not know. So you don't bring your credentials and your resume of righteousness to God. You come in repentance. You see, people who work or who attempt to work for their salvation, People who attempt to earn their salvation, they will keep in holidays, dress code, the food they eat. They also want others to earn salvation. They get irritated, angry, to imagine someone else can receive salvation freely by grace through faith in the Son of God. And the truth is this, you can't earn God's salvation. <laughs> Salvation will remain a free gift. And what do you do with the gift? You just receive it. So when you think you have earned salvation, you want to force others to earn salvation. When you know it's a free gift, you also don't put an unnecessary burden to others. The Lord never gave any single condition of salvation except receiving him as Lord and Savior, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him, whoever believes, only believe, shall not perish, but have eternal life. So we must come to God in repentance. James 5.16, confess your sins to each other. And the early church literally did this. They were confessing sins to one another. And here is the deal. We can't continually build on the foundation of repentance. We must mature up as Christians. There's a difference 
between falling in sin and living in sin. 1 John 3, 6. If we keep on sinning, if we keep on deliberately sinning, we have never known God. No one who knows him keeps on sinning. And it's also repeated in 1 John 3, 9. 1 John 3, 9, 1 John 3, 6. No one who knows him keeps on sinning. Now, this, every one of us can fall into temptation. Each one of us. But there's a difference between falling into temptation and living in sin. It's one thing to cheat once. It's the other thing to continually cheat. To continually loot from the government coffers. It's one thing to fall into the sin of fornication because you compromised your situation. It's another thing to deliberately keep on sleeping with whoever you find. And the Bible says you can't know Christ and continually enjoy a life of sin. So the first type of prayer is confession. Professing our sins before God. And remember this, salvation is not complete until you confess him as Lord and Savior. With the heart we believe and with the mouth we confess and the salvation deal is sealed. Types of prayers. Number two, supplication. Supplication simply means request. Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. Here is the deal. The Bible says be anxious for nothing. People are doing the exact opposite. They are anxious about everything. People are anxious about the next rent, how to clear the mortgage. People are anxious, what's happening with my child in the university or in high school? Maybe you are listening to me, you are anxious about your health, anxious about the next meal, anxious you're going to lose your job, anxious you're going to lose your marriage, anxious you're not going to get married, and the clock is ticking, anxious about your financial security, how, how will I make ends meet as I age? You are doing the exact opposite of the command in Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for nothing. But do what? By prayer, with supplication, and thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. And the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding shall guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. In other words, when you present your request to God in prayer, rather than being anxious, rather than worrying, the peace of God that transcends human understanding. What's that? Peace when people don't expect you to have peace. Peace when you're bereaved. Peace when you're sick. I went through open heart surgery two months ago, but I never lost peace. I never imagined myself dying. Why? The peace of God was flooding my heart. There is peace even when you're bereaved. There is peace even when you lose your job. It's called the peace of God. It can only come when you stop worrying and you present your request to God in prayer. Why should you not worry? One, worry changes nothing. Two, worry denies you your current peace. It compromises your peace and it does not change anything. That's why Jesus said, Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? Because the ultimate fear people have is the fear of death. The reason people fear old age, the reason people fear sickness, it is because the end product is death. <laughs> because they perceive a sickness can lead to death. Old age can lead to death. But when you come to Christ, you already have passed from death to life. You have already started eternal life because Christ lives through you. Christ in us, the hope of glory. So don't worry. Worry will not pay your school fees. Worry will not get you a job. Worry will not fix your marriage. Worry will not take care of your child who is in drugs. 
present your requests to God in prayer. And there is no prayer too big for God. For that matter, there is no prayer too small for God. Present each and every prayer to God. Why? God already knows your prayers. He is waiting for you to tell him. He is just a prayer away. What a friend we have in Jesus. He said, Come unto me, O ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take your burdens to the Lord, for he cares for you. Stop cutting the burdens. Take them to the Lord in prayer. Number three, thanksgiving. Thanksgiving prayers. Psalms 100, verse number four. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. In the Old Testament, they used to carry a thanksgiving offering to the Lord. They never went to the house of God empty-hearted. You, as a new covenant believer, you're supposed to do better than the Old Testament believer. They did that to satisfy the law. You should be compelled by the love of Christ to give. You cannot love without giving. You can give without loving so that you are seen by others. But when you love Christ, you don't wait for a sermonate on Sunday to give because you're telling God, thank you for the year 2020. Thank you for good health. Thank you for my relationships. Thank you for my marriage. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my job. Thank you, Lord, that I'm alive. Maybe you're even sick and you're listening to me right now. Maybe you are not making eggs meet and you're listening to me now and wondering, do I have a reason to thank God? Yes, you do. You are still alive. If you're breathing on this side of the grass, you have a reason to thank God. Why thank God? Things could have been worse. Why thank God? Psalms 107 verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. It's his love that has kept you alive so far. Can I ask you? <laughs> do you have a reason to thank God for 2020? Yes, you do. So many people were taken down by COVID-19. They are no more. But here you are listening to this message. Even the mere fact you can hear this message, you have a reason to thank God. In some countries, they cannot hear the word of God. You have a reason to thank God for your help. If you can't thank God for what you have, you cannot thank God for what he will give you. Learn to thank God in all situations. Give thanks in every situation. We don't thank God for sickness, but we thank God even in sickness. We don't thank God for divorce, but we thank God even in divorce. Give thanks in every situation, for this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus, the Bible says. Prayer number four, meditation. Meditation, what's that? Spending quiet time in the presence of God. Stillness of heart and spirit. Isn't it weird when we are dealing with our friends, colleagues, family, we talk and then we listen to them, we wait for their feedback. When it comes to God, most believers, they speak and then they walk away. You have not completed the communication cycle. Communication is two-way. Meditation is waiting on God. Isaiah 40, 31. Even the young men shall grow weary, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Imagine, even soccer players, athletes, will get weary. But if you wait on God, in his presence, we wait on God in prayers, meditating on the word of God. Meditation is purely on the word of God. 
I'm not talking about the Eastern religious practices that make people connect with the demonic world. Christian meditation is purely meditating on scriptures, on the greatness of God and the goodness of God. So, the Bible says in Psalm 63, verse 6, On my bed, I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. The psalmist will say, even when I sleep, all my dreams are about God and His goodness and His greatness. I allow the Holy Spirit to take over my spirit through my dream Lord. I meditate on Him through all the watches of the night. Prayer number five. And by the way, I really challenge you to create quiet time moments. Yes, you have time for prayer. You have time for unnecessary phone calls. You spend hours on social media browsing unnecessary stuff, watching TV. You have time for prayer. You have time for what you want. Jesus challenged the disciples at Gethsemane. Could you to watch and pray for just an hour? You can create an hour of prayer every single day. Don't pray to God to help you pray. No. Don't pray for God to help you pray. No. God will help you as you pray. God will not help you to pray. God will help you as you pray. Prayer is a discipline. It's a decision. It's a commitment to build your relationship with God. Number five, dedication. Prayers of dedication. You buy a new car, take it for dedication. New house, take it for dedication. What's that? Invite a servant of God to pray over that house. That's the same thing we do when you get a bride. It's getting God's blessings. You have a newborn child, take them for dedication. In 1 Samuel 1, 22 to 28, Hannah took his, uh, her baby boy Samuel to the house of God for dedication, for blessings, to commit a child to God in prayer. If what God has given you is important, dedicate it to God. If you have a new job, dedicate it to God by taking the first fruits of your job to God. What's that? The entire first salary, take it to God in prayer. Just think about this. You have been jobless for two years. You have just gotten a job. Lacking this month, the first month's salary, is not what will make you broke. You can decide to dedicate your job and trust God never to lack a job and just do what God requires of you. Take the entire salary, the first fruit, to the house of God where you worship and then continue it time. Why time? When you're taking 10% to God in the house of God, you are telling God, I'm entrusting you to manage the 90% I have. You rebuke the devourer and promote the work of my hands. I'm trusting you for promotion in my job. I'm trusting you for elevation in 2021. I'm trusting you to bless me in my relationships in my health, God, you have given me everything. I'm conscious. You own a hundred percent. I'm only giving you 10% to let you know that I depend on you. I rely on you. I trust in your word. I'm not trading with God. I'm not doing business with God. I threw 10, he throws to me a thousand. Uh-uh. You don't do trade with God. It is a form of worship. It's letting God know you are conscious. He gave you everything. And you don't want to give God lip service. You want to genuinely thank him. Why? Where your money is, there your heart is. Where your treasures are, there your heart is. You cannot love without continually giving. Without continually investing in a relationship. If you love your children, what do you do to them? You give to them continually. There's a house you're paying rent or mortgage or a loan. There are clothes you buy them, food you buy them, school fees, holiday. You keep giving them every single day. 
Wherever there is love, there is giving. That's the reality. So learn to dedicate your stuff to God. Anything you value. For me, when God blesses me with a new car, I actually dedicate it by praying over it with the anointing oil. <laughs> oh, number six, intercessory. Intercessory prayers. God said in Ezekiel 22, 30, concerning the nation of Israel, I looked for a man who could study the gap between me and the nation. I found none. So I destroyed them. There is no one who was praying for the country. And maybe everybody thought everyone is praying for God to remove COVID-19. The pastors thought the intercessors are praying. The church members thought the pastors are praying. And maybe nobody was praying. Let, let me give you two examples of what happens when we pray and what happens when we don't pray. Now, God told Jonah he's going to destroy an entire city, Nineveh, a city of 120,000 people. The president of the country convened a prayer meeting, declared prayer and fasting for three days, including their children and animals. The only time animals had to fast, that's a lot of faith in God. God re-rented. God changed his mind. God repented what he wanted to do in Nineveh. What is to repent? Is to change what you had planned to do. Because someone stood in the gap. Someone interceded. Someone prayed for the city of Nineveh. In the very first church, we had three church fathers, Peter, John, and James. When the Lord ascended on high, they began having serious breakthroughs. The very first preaching, 3,000 people, God saved. The next preaching, 5,000 people, God saved. Then they relaxed in their prayer life. Herod killed James, one of the pillars of the church. When he realized this amused the Jews, he now picked the bishop of the church, Peter. And now he, went, he took him to jail with 16 soldiers so that he can behead him the following morning. That made the church to wake up from the sleep. They prayed without stopping. They interceded for Peter, prayed through the entire night until God's heart was touched. God sent an angel who rescued Peter. The church stopped praying when Peter was at the door of the house where they had met. And now they began to exclaim in joy, thunderous joy. Had they not prayed for Peter, trust me, Peter too would have been killed. The Bible says in Acts chapter 12, you can read it, you can read the story in Acts chapter 12, how they interceded for Peter through the night. Here is the deal. The fact that God has given you a promise, you may not receive it until you pray for it. Let me say one more time. Even though God has given you a promise for a great ministry, for a great marriage, for a great business, even though there is a prophetic word over your life, you will be a millionaire. That may never happen until you reach it in prayer. You are waiting on God. God is waiting on you. The, fair, the mere fact that it's a promise of God doesn't imply it will be fulfilled in your life. The promises of God are yes in Him, and amen in Him. On condition, you release them in prayers. You see, the Lord Jesus promised the church the gift of the Holy Spirit. He told them to tarry in Jerusalem until they endowed with power from on high. The spirit of truth. But guess what? The church prayed intensely for 10 days for the Holy Spirit to come. Even though the promise was given, the church had to pray for the promise to be fulfilled. I wonder what word of God has been spoken over your life. I wonder what prophetic word has been spoken over your ministry, over your family, 
You are holding it through your prayerlessness, through your laziness. Get on your knees. Pray until God answers that prayer. Hold on in prayer until that promise becomes a reality. God's waiting on you. Learn to intercede, to stand in the gap on behalf of the family. Stop imagining someone is praying for you. Stop hoping someone is praying for your marriage. Someone is praying for your job. Stand in the gap. Pray for your nation. Stand in the gap. Pray for your church. Stand in the gap. Pray for our generation. God has wiped out an entire generation. Intercede for ministers of the world. Intercede for this planet. Number seven. Prayer number seven. Corporate prayers. These are prayers of agreement. Agreement prayers. In Matthew 18, 19, Jesus said, Where two or three of you shall agree on anything, shall agree touching anything, it shall be done. The Lord loves corporate prayers. Acts 1, 14, they all joined together constantly, constantly in prayer. The early church constantly prayed together. The psalmist wrote, How blessed it is when brethren dwell together in unity. Families that pray together stay together. You cannot pray for someone and harm them at the same time. You cannot pray for someone and bewitch them. You cannot pray for someone and fight them. You cannot pray for someone and, do, and be jealous with them. Be jealous with their progress. The reason in your family, there is a lot of antagonism, a lot of fighting, backbiting, bringing each other down. It's because you never pray for one another. You can't pray for someone and fight them at the same time. Stop wishing your husband can change and begin praying for him. Stop wishing your wife can change and begin praying for her. You cannot change your spouse. You cannot change your partner. You can only change yourself. This is the cardinal rule. Work on me. Pray for my partner. Work on me. Pray for my boss. Work on me. Pray for my pastor. So long as you don't pray for your pastor, you will begin by biting him. You will begin by biting the people you don't pray for. Begin to pray for your friends and you will never again see them as competitors. Oh yes, they are called corporate prayers. God loves corporate prayers. He commands the blessings when we pray together. In my family, we pray together every day. Every day. Is it a word we have lived for years with my mercy, without quarreling? I challenge you as couples, start praying together. You can't pray together and begin to fight. Praying, joining hands, blessing each other, prophesying over each other. You'll be surprised with what will happen in your marriage. Number eight, prayer number eight. Praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. Jude 1 verse 20, Judas only one chapter. So verse 20 says, Building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Spirit is surrendering to the Holy Spirit, allowing the Holy Spirit to pray through you. Because we don't even know how to pray or even what we ought to pray for. He, the Spirit of Truth, the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of the Living God, the Holy Spirit, intercedes for us with groanings that words cannot express. He prays for us when we surrender to Him with words that can't be expressed in English or Spanish or French or your own national language. 
you surrender to the Holy Spirit. You let yourself go completely and allow the Spirit of God to pray through you. You see, Jesus is our mediator. He is the mediator of the new covenant. He presents us in heaven. We present him on earth. So we are Christ's ambassadors. He is our mediator. The Holy Spirit is our intercessor. He presents the prayers of the saints as a sweet smelling aroma before the throne of mercy, before the throne of God. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Corinth, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 15. I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my understanding. I will pray with understanding because I have prayer items I need to present to God consciously. I need to pray for my children. I need to pray for my church. I need to pray for my country, for my job. I need to pray for everything about me consciously. But I will also pray with my spirit. Like why pray in the spirit? To understand the mysteries of God. When you pray in the spirit, God releases his anointing over your life, over your family, over your ministry. Ministry is not preaching. That's just part of it. Everything you touch as a child of God. Your job is ministry. You're serving God. You're Christ's ambassador in the marketplace. I never present any message before I pray in the spirit. Because when I pray in the spirit, I fathom deep mysteries. God reveals to me things that are beyond the written word, beyond the logos. I see what I call the rema, the revealed word, the word that is for me in this situation. It's revealed to me when I speak in an unknown language, praying in the spirit. So when you read the word of God, you see the logos. Peter walked on water. That's logos. If you try to walk on a river or a lake, you will drown because that word is not for you. It was Peter's rema word. So when you pray in the spirit, God is able to reveal the word for 2021 for you, for your family, for your business. What is God telling you in this situation, in this season of your life? Release yourself. Surrender yourself in the Holy Spirit. At that moment, you don't use the watch. But don't do this when you're praying with other people. Do this when you're alone. Because when you pray in the Spirit, it's for your own edification. But praying in the Spirit can be used prophetically so long as there is someone to interpret the tongue. That's why you should not do this publicly unless there is someone interpreting what you're saying. That's why Paul says, you would rather speak one sensible word that others can understand. Don't go in public when people are waiting for you to lead prayers and then you pray in a language they can't understand unless the Holy Spirit brings an interpreter of what you're saying. Number nine, worship and adoration. There is so much in the word of God about worship. Thousands of scriptures about worship. The entire Bible is about love and worship. God created us to worship Him. So today, because there's so much written about worshiping the Father, I'll only pull two examples, two passages from the Bible about worshiping Jesus because He's God and He accepts worship. In Matthew 2.11, the wise men from the east came to look for baby Jesus. And when they found the born king, they worshipped him. 2,000 years later, wise men search for Jesus. And when they find him, they worship him. Wise men worship the Lord. In Matthew 28, 17, after resurrection, 
Jesus appeared to his own disciples. When they saw him, they worshipped him. When they saw him, they worshipped him. God created you to worship him. That's why if you are unable to worship him on earth, then he cannot give you a ticket to heaven. Because heaven is all about worship. Scripture says in Philippians 2, Every knee shall bow, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Every knee in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Every angel in heaven, every man on earth, every devil in hell, and the man in hell right now, on the day of judgment, shall bow and confess every king, every leader, every president, prime minister, shall keep their crown down and confess Jesus is Lord. You'd rather do it right now. If you can't worship the Lord right now, there is no way you will get a ticket to worship the Lord eternally in heaven. And worship is not boring. The angels don't worship because they have to. God is so sweet. <laughs> he is so beautiful. God does not change. It's our understanding of him that keeps changing, that keeps increasing. So they keep saying in heaven, holy, holy, holy. By the time they finish, he reveals another aspect of himself. And they bow in worship. Oh, worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lord God Almighty. They always say three times, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. By the time they finish, God reveals another thing they had never ever thought or imagined about God. Without revelation, they bow in awe, in wonder, in amazement and say, oh, you are holy, holy, Holy Lord God Almighty. We worship to the extent God has revealed himself to us. He created us for worship. He dwells in the praises of his people where they are worshiping him. Prayer number 10, deliverance. When we hear the word deliverance, we think about being delivered from demons. But there is also another kind of deliverance. Being delivered from addictions. Being delivered from drugs. Being delivered from distress and worries and anxiety. Being delivered from depression. Psalms 107 verse 6. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distress. This is a prayer of deliverance the psalmist was making. Oh Lord, deliver me from my distress. Deliver me from this situation. It's troublesome. I don't have peace of mind. I'm stressed beyond measure. So God delivers us from situations beyond us. God delivers us from peacelessness. The Bible says he gives sleep to them that he loves. Number 11, number 11, prayer of faith, prayer of faith. In Mark eleven twenty four, 24, Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. In other words, don't wait to receive and then believe. Believe and then receive. Faith is not seeing and then believing, but believing and then seeing. Now, what was the context of this scripture? Mark eleven twenty four. Jesus cast the fig tree, but it did nothing happen to the fig tree. The following morning, the disciples passed by the fig tree and they realized it has withered away. The previous day when Jesus spoke to the fig tree, nothing physically 
happen to the fig tree. They never saw anything happen to the fig tree. You see, the disciples saw Jesus heal instantly. The disciples saw Jesus raise the dead. The disciples saw Jesus calm the storms instantly. The blind eyes opened instantly. So Jesus used this occasion to teach them a fundamental principle. Even if you don't see something happening, don't waver in your faith. Even if you don't see results right now, don't waver in your faith. Don't. So they never saw anything happen to the fig tree that particular evening. But the following day, the tree had withered. So now Jesus tells them, whatever you pray for, whether you see results or not, believe you have received and you will have it. So then he added, whoever will speak to this mountain and say, be removed from here, if you can speak, if you can say to this mountain, be removed from here and planted in the sea, and you don't doubt in your heart, it shall be done. Jesus never said, negotiate with your mountain, plead with your mountain, pray over your mountain. He said, speak to your mountain. When you don't speak to your mountain, that mountain will speak to you. You see, nothing happens until you speak. God created everything by speaking. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. The world was chaotic, formless, and void until God spoke order onto this planet. And then he has given us the same date. He has endowed us with the same grace, the same anointing to speak things into existence. Nothing happens until you speak. Speak to your situation. Rise up in the morning, go to the mirror and say, I am the most beautiful girl since time began. I'm the most handsome man in the world. I am the best engineer in my generation. I'm the best cardiologist since medicine was invented. Speak with boldness. Don't speak the future tense. I will be an engineer. I will be a millionaire. I will be a minister of the gospel. No. That's an elusive, futuristic tense. Speak the now language. You are a child of God. Emulate your father. Speak like your father. God calls things that are not as though they are. Speak the now language. Not I will be rich, but I am a millionaire. I am healed. I walk in divine health. I'm the best husband in the whole world. I'm the best mother in the whole world. Speak the now language. You see, the centurion understood this principle. In your devotional time, study the story in Matthew chapter 8 from verse number 5. This army general came to Jesus and said, My servant is unwell. And the Lord Jesus knew, give honor to the one honor is due. So he told the general, I will come over to your house and pray over your servant. The general said, no, Jesus, I'm a general. I rule the army. I understand how things work. I speak the word, they fire the bullets. I say the word. Action takes place in the battlefield. Jesus, I know who you are. Say the word and demons will leave. Say the word and sickness will leave. You don't need to come to my house. You don't need to travel. Your language is known in higher dimensions. In higher realms, they recognize your authority. They know you're the commander of the armies of God. Sickness hears your voice. Storms know your voice. Demons bow at your voice. Jesus, just say the word. Just say the word. 
And Jesus said, I've never seen such faith all over Israel. I ask you right now, say the word. Say the word. Speak to your situation. Speak to that sickness. Don't allow the sickness to speak to you. Speak to your marriage right now. Speak to that jobless situation. Command a job right now in the name of Jesus. I command you to receive your healing in the name of Jesus. I command the sickness in your body to live right now in the name of Jesus. I command that jobless situation to disappear in the name of Jesus. I command the fights in your family to live right now in the name of Jesus. I speak peace in your marriage. I speak peace in your family. I speak financial breakthrough right now in the name of Jesus. Receive it. Receive it in the name of Jesus. No more deaths in 2021. You shall be the head and never the tail. You shall be the top and never the bottom. You shall lead to many and borrow from none. Hallelujah. No sickness has power over you. I speak divine health over your child. I speak divine health over your parents. I speak breakthrough in your ministry. In the name of Jesus. I speak salvation in your household. No drugs in that family anymore. No drunkenness in that family anymore. No hospitalization in your family anymore. No more depression in your body. In the name of Jesus. Get up in the morning. Speak to your mountain. Faith is saying, I'm waiting for God to do it. Men of faith never give up. Faith is the ability to hold on in prayer. Faith is the ability to hang on. Jesus gave a story in Luke 18 of a woman who persistently kept on knocking. But the judge could not listen. He didn't honor God. The judge didn't respect anyone. He was full of himself. But this widow kept on knocking. Every night when the guy slept that she could come and knock. When he was about to sleep, she had a nagging spirit. Though he never respected God, though he never respected the woman, he respected his sleep. And eventually he succumbed. He yielded. He gave in and attended to her, listened to her prayers. And Jesus said, hear how the unjust judge said. If this unjust, wicked judge could listen to the woman for the sake of his sleep, how much more shall our righteous father, who has a relationship with us, who loves us, who delights in blessing us, hear our prayers? And Jesus said, he will answer the prayers of his children speedily. No more delay in your marriage. God has given you a husband. In the name of Jesus. God has given you a God-fearing wife. In the name of Jesus. No more delays in your finances. God is blessing your finances. In the name of Jesus. No more delays. Hold on in prayer. Why hold on? Because God wants you to cultivate a relationship with Him. He wants you to cultivate an intimate relationship with Him. He's giving you a chance to hold it in prayer so that you can be intimate. Stop using God and learn to build a relationship with God. James 5, 14 to 15. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith, the prayer offered in faith will make the sick 
person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. James is saying the prayer offered in faith. Why? Because sometimes when you pray for the sick, you don't see the results immediately. But don't doubt. You see, Jesus said, whoever does not doubt in his heart. Why? You can doubt in your mind, you're human, but don't ever say it. Never speak words of doubt with your mouth. Never say any negative word with your mouth. Because when you speak, you transfer it from your head to your heart. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. You can speak life or death to your situation. You can bless or curse your children with your words. You can build or destroy your marriage with your words. You can create or destroy your business with your words. You can build or ruin your career with your words. Proverbs 18, 21. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Even when you don't see results, keep saying, I'm getting married in 2021. My marriage is stable this year, 2021. I am getting promoted this year, 2021. Say it, even when you don't see results. That's what Jesus was teaching. After this message, if there is anyone sick that you know, walk by faith. Lay your right hand on them. In Jesus' name. Join with my faith and do it and they will recover. Prayer number 12 and the last one. Commands and decrees. Commands and decrees. There are three types of commands. The first type of command is commanding evil spirits to leave. Commanding demons to leave. Some sicknesses are caused by demons. In Luke 8.29, Jesus commanded evil spirits to to leave. No one cast out demons before Jesus came. Those who are demon possessed were left to kill themselves, to be killed by demons in the tombs. Nobody knew demons can be cast out. So when Jesus cast out demons, people were amazed. What manner of teaching is this? What manner of man is this? But now he has given the same authority to his church. He said, you shall trample on serpents and scorpions, and no power of hell shall ever harm you. He gave us power to lay hands on the sick and they recover, not the pastors, nor the priests, all his children, not just evangelists. Everyone who believes in Christ and walks by faith has power to cast out demons and they obey you. But demons don't listen to your words. They listen to two things. One, your relationship with Jesus. And number two, speaking in faith. If you have no relationship with Jesus, don't ever dare cast out demons. They will beat you dead as they did to the sons of Sceva. They only respect a relationship. They can see in the spiritual realm whether you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. If your family is bound by demons and witchcraft and generational curses, right now in the name of Jesus, I lose your family from demonic stronghold. I lose your family from generational curses. By the authority I have in Jesus, your family is free from generational curses in Jesus' name. So three commands. The first command is commanding demons to leave. The second command is commanding our situations. Matthew 18, 18. 
Jesus said, Whatever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. You can command your situation. Jesus commanded the stormy sea of Galilee to come down. The storm listened to him. You can command every situation to bow before the Lord. And whatever you bite on earth is bowed in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. I loose prosperity over your life. In the name of Jesus. I lose health. Over your life. In the name of Jesus. In 2021. You will walk in absolute victory. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And at that command. You can command the Lord. Can you believe that? The Lord dares his children to command him. Isaiah 45, 15. Concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. Concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. You are the work of God. You are the work of his hands. You are the apple of his eye. Not just the gospel. Many times when we hear the work of his hands, we think about the gospel. Yes, that's true. To the extent we are saying, God loves people. God loves his children. God wants his children to walk in divine hell, in divine prosperity. Poverty is from the pit of hell. Sickness is from the devil. Illness and disease is from the evil one. God wants you to walk in divine hell. You are listening to a man. Two months ago, when through open heart surgery, they cut through my chest bone to fix my heart. I was born with a heart disease and I did not know. And I'm now looking at your eye and saying, if God healed me, God will heal you. I owe no man, no woman any debt. I trusted God. I will not get in 2021 with any debt. And now I command you to walk debt free in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, walk debt free. And if you want to connect with the anointing in my life, I want you to go and speak the words I'm speaking to you. Speak to your situation. If you're not born again, you want to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. You want to be forgiven your sins and to open a new chapter in 2021 to walk as a child of God. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord Jesus Christ, I receive you in my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. If you pray that simple prayer, you are born again. With our hearts we believe, and with our mouth we confess, and so we are saved. Romans 10, 9 to 10. We believe with our hearts, we confess with our sins, and the Lord forgives us all sins. I have a discipleship class for new believers, a new believers class. Help me to identify you. Just write simple words. I pray to be saved. Write as a comment on this YouTube video. Those of you watching me on Facebook, just write on this Facebook Live. I prayed to be saved. If you're watching me on YouTube, write as a comment on YouTube. I prayed to be saved. 
so that I can identify you and reach out to you and send you a link through which you can enroll for my new believers class so that I can teach you how to grow in your faith. If you want to give the Lord a thanksgiving offering for what he has done for you through the year 2020, for caring for you and protecting you, I've given you that provision. You can give the Lord a thanksgiving offering and tell the Lord, thank you for good health. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, dear God, that I'm alive when so many people perished in 2020. Thank you, dear Lord, for my marriage. Thank you for what you're going to do in 2021. You can thank God in advance. That's a symbol of faith. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord bless you and be gracious to you. The Lord bless your marriage. The Lord bless you in 2021, the Lord protect you from every sickness and disease. May the Lord prosper you. May the Lord bless the work of your hands. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shalom. Have you been blessed by this video? Please like and share with family, friends, and colleagues. Great people are either sources of light or they are mirrors that reflect the light. Be a channel of blessings to others and hit the subscribe button to enjoy thousands of my videos free of charge.